we can uh, take your peeler mask off if you want to be more, a little bit more comfortable. It's really up to you. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. Just roaming here and uh, waiting for our time. I don't know. Should I flip my phone? Okay. So we're just waiting for our time to ride the what's that? The Brewster. That, uh, what do you call that big truck? The big bus? The Explorer? Can you see me? hintay na aming sasakyan pa wanda sa ice field so see you later so we're going in and going to the glacier interpretation uh, so, uh, all the way through it actually so, okay again welcome and uh, we'll make wrap there very shortly here. Usually uh, start talking about the uh, glacier and ice fields uh, just as we roll by the parking lot on the right hand side. Uh, just beside the uh, green stairs. Uh, there's some rolling hills of debris. We know that one as the uh, terminal moraine. So a uh, moraine is a hill of debris left behind by the glacier. We got some more on the right hand side. These ones are push or recessional moraines. 
If uh, anybody came by car, you can take a drive down there to the right. I'll take you to uh, Samoata Lake. Uh, they get some more hiking trails and some markers with the path of the glacier over the years that way. Ecosystem right now is the uh, subalpine. Uh, in, uh, getting a little bit more extreme weather or uh, climate here, but uh, trees can still grow here. So uh, the ones on our left are subalpine fir and Engelmann spruce. Uh, trees are actually old, about three or four hundred years old. Uh, they have a very short growing season here of about uh, two months of the year. It's also windy here a lot of the time. We have uh, strong catabatic winds that sweep down from the mountains. Um, they can damage the trees as well. Uh, some of the trees coming up on our left uh, look funny looking. They only grow on their one side. Uh, the other side's been blown off by the winds. Uh, we know them as uh, flag trees. So we're nearing the uh, trench base, that's what we're getting on the ice explorers. Uh, if you don't want to take stuff on the ice, uh, you can leave it on the bus. We'll be taking this bus back to the uh, skywalk when we're done with the ice. So that'll be our bus uh, just behind the number six. So uh, where's everybody from? Uh, mostly Albertans, I guess, or? 
Sono? Ecco. Yeah, yeah, I grew up in uh, Saskatchewan. I live out in the West Coast now. Uh, when I was a young man, I, I was in the military, so I moved around a lot, so... Uh, I'm kind of without a home sometimes. So on the way, um, usually uh, we start talking about uh, just up, uh, it's harder for the people on the right hand side, but that uh, ice you see up there, that would be the North Face Glacier. Uh, it's an example of a Cirque Glacier, it's been carved out in a circle, and it sits on top of the Athabasca Mountain, so it's uh, elevation wise, it's 3,491 meters. It uh, takes about 10 to 12 hours to climb up that one. So you have your breakfast and go climb it and uh, you should be back by supper time. Everything goes right. Yeah, so there's uh, three three kind of eco, eco regions in the uh, park. Uh, Banff and Jasper have lower elevations, so they'd be considered a mountain area. Uh, leafy trees. Valley bottoms, it's warmer there, more animals. When you get to the subalpine, about uh, 2,000 meters and higher, uh, it's getting a little bit more uh, harder for uh, vegetation to survive up here. Very few trees, it's only the real hardiest little evergreen trees that can survive up here. Not too much uh, wildlife up here because there's nothing much for them to eat up here. Uh, we do see some marmots up, like it up high. The little pikas, the little squirrel, and the uh, big horns of off here. Particularly the mums that have young ones, uh, it's safer for them up here because there's not much uh, predators up here. We can see them on uh, lateral range, sometimes walking along there, kind of uh, looking away at the uh, rocks and dust. And what they're trying to do there is uh, they're missing certain diet, uh, minerals in their diet as keratin. So they uh, they uh, have a real craving for it. There's a marmot just ran across the road here. I don't know if we can see them or not, but they blend in pretty good with the rocks. Yeah, uh, it, he might have gone into his hole, but he was just running across here. Uh, yeah, they're kind of the color of the rocks are kind of a dark, dark brown and uh, lighter browns. Yeah. Yeah, so we talked about moraines on the way up. Uh, the one on the right is kind of the granddaddy out here. It's the uh, lateral moraine for the Athabasca Glacier. It's up to 90 meters high. It would have formed the sides of the glacier back uh, at the end of the last mini ice age that ended in 1843. And that one went on for about 600 years. So oddly enough, that makes up part of our road system here. We're going to be traveling uh, down it very shortly. And it'll give you an idea of the size and scale of everything out here uh, once we start our descent. Yeah, so you get a good view of the uh, Athabasca Glacier. Uh, there's a ice explorer just on our right outside. That's where we're headed. We're about a kilometer and a half from here. So this was a mini ice age. The last major ice age was Wisconsin ice age. That one lasted for about 65,000 years ago. It ended up 11,000 years ago. And the ice had been right to the very tops of the mountains. a very steep hill. It's one of the steepest hills in North America actually at 32% uh, grade. They, they told you about that when you're buying your tickets. Is that correct? I must have forgot. Yeah, so we're going to take some uh, safety precautions uh, before we go down this one. 32%. 
opener, all-wheel drive on. We're gonna gear down, we have a engine retarder. Oh shoot, you know what I forgot? During the safety briefings, we should have been wearing our uh, seat belts. You'll find them tucked in under your seats. <laughs> Everybody got a buckle up? Yeah, fortunately we're in uh, East Explorer, so uh, there's, yeah, we had 22 of them built for us here. They're built with spect specifications to uh, from the glaciers, so they're able to handle these steep hills. Um, this one has all-wheel drive. Very big tires on it, they're 1.65 meters high, wow. meter wide. We keep very low tire pressure, about uh, 15 pounds in them. Yeah. Distribute the weight of the bus better. So we're able to, to maneuver these hills. Wow. It does it just kind of give you an idea of the power of glaciers to go to uh, force solid rock out of this valley. Took quite a bit of force to do that. Oh my god. This is horizontal. Horizontal and that's south steep. Oh my god. Oh wow. How do you take a picture? Oh my god. Like how much this is, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can see how steep it is. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, so we're almost at the bottom of this first leg here, and uh, the second one isn't uh, as steep as the second, uh, the first house. So. What's that? <laughs> yeah. Pickup trucks can make it up here, but you have to have the right tires, and you have to have a good run at it uh, to get up here. Wow. All-wheel drive helps a lot. <laughs> okay, so we're, uh, everybody's okay. Didn't scare you too bad. A little scary is okay. Terrified we have nightmares and night isn't uh, okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this part of the road uh, looks like a regular dirt road, but it's actually uh, considered part of the glacier. It's the uh, ice core moraine. Uh, it has about a meter of debris on top of it, glacier till, and that uh, protects it from the sunlight so it doesn't melt as fast as the uh, pulled off the Nazca on our right hand side that's exposed to sunlight. So what would happen is the glacier is pulled down by gravity, it uh, grinds against the side of the mountain, the rock here is very soft and brittle breaks apart, and uh, that material would tumble over onto the ice, and if you have enough of it, it uh, shows it from the sun. There's not too much water down to bottom here. Uh, this little creek was uh, purposely uh, diverted it for to um, kind of clean up our bus a little bit. Uh, we're not dragging too much debris onto the ice. Uh, the cleaner the ice road, the slower it is to melt. So we're just going to run our bus through this little bit of water. This water would all flow up the Arctic Ocean from here. It goes into the Athabasca and Mackenzie River systems and eventually make its way up to the little town of Anivik and just past there, we dump it into the Arctic Ocean.
Olympics are officially on the uh, Athabasca. We have reason to celebrate. If you have brought anything with you, some champagne, it's a good time to on a cork, as long as you give me a glass. I'll calm my nerves a little bit. Uh, so where we're headed, the ice is about 265 meters thick. Uh, once you get out to Skywalk, uh, the last platform to the Florida Canyon, Canyon will be a similar uh, depth, so that'd be a reference. Here. Uh, the one to our left is Double A. It was uh, never, named, uh, never officially named, but it's uh, uh, located between Andromeda and Athabasca Mountains, so they call it Double A. And the one about 10 o'clock is uh, Andromeda. Uh, they're both examples of uh, alpine glaciers, as you're no longer connected to Columbia Osceola, you know, any longer just kind of sit there by themselves. So when we think about the ice fields, it's kind of like a big frozen lake that sits on top of the mountains. It makes up 90% of the ice out here. Uh, it's about 200, 200 square kilometers of ice, and it's about 300 meters thick stationary. The excess ice that's formed up there will flow down to glaciers. So it's different to ice fields glaciers. The ice fields on top of the mountains, and the glaciers run down from them. Some of the uh, hazards um, are mill wells. A mill well is kind of like a water slide. It's a big hole in the ice with water flowing through the center of it. And a crevasse with a big crack in the ice. And they can be uh, 30 meters deep as well. They're both extremely dangerous to fall into them. Particularly in the springtime if you have snow pack out here and you can't see them. And uh, it'll be a snow bridge that will form on top of it. But it won't support your weight. Uh, so people can fall into them and they're, they're gone. So we'll, it's a good idea to stay within the boundary markers of the area. It's all been safety checked. And uh, we'll try to keep everybody safe out here. Yeah, so I'll be around if, uh, if uh, you want to take any pictures or you have any questions, uh, let me know. Yeah. And we'll be here for uh, 20 minutes. So uh, we're looking about... Uh, 15 sort of thing to make her way back to the bus. Yeah. Is that one I got one to one more? Just going down to the to the ice fields now, the glacier. So you can take the pillow glass off if you want to feel more comfortable. It's really up to you. Thanks Kevin. Yeah. Just in Columbia Icefield Glacier.
good. <laughs> Second steepest hill. That one, that one. Yeah, it's a 32, 32 percent, yeah. 32 degrees. 32 degrees. 32 degrees. Fields and uh, Athabas Glacier is a lot of information uh, uh, available. Bruce, Bruce Urban did this tour since 1900. They used to do it by horseback from Bath. It'd take up to a month to get out here. Uh, they got the idea to do motorized tours uh, after watching the military guys 
uh, training in World War II. Uh, the running around was a little Studebaker weasel tracked vehicle. And uh, so they, uh, after World War II in the early 50s, uh, they served with the Bombardier Stormobile uh, doing tours. Yeah, so uh, one, of, one, of the, one of the reasons I, I, I come out here, I, I think it's kind of a special place, is because of the evolution. Uh, it used to be a warm tropical environment here, the same climate as Florida, and there was an ocean here uh, called the Bear Brown Sea. There was no mountains. So there's been a lot of changes over the years. Yeah, so uh, well, we really did make those changes. Uh, the uh, sedimentary layers at the bottom of the ocean would have hardened over time, millions of years, became uh, marine life. And there's the, uh, plates in the Earth's crust, the tectonic plates. The West Coast ones would have collided with the central ones. Uh, that would have forced up the Rocky Mountains. In their prime, they were uh, almost twice as high as they are now. The uh, glaciers and elements have eroded them over the years. Climate change. Uh, it could have been the uh, Earth's rotation around the sun was a little different, or uh, the uh, magnetic, magnetic compass tilted. Could be a lot of things that uh, nobody really knows for sure, but we're in a warming trend right now. Normally the uh, cycles last for 75,000 years. This one only lasted for 600 years. So uh, once the ice melts in the uh, 2100, uh, there's going to be some big changes coming to the environment. Because some big rivers flow out of here. The yeah, Bowen, Saskatchewan, Columbia, Fraser, Mackenzie, Trekking Horse, all need glacier belt in the summer months to keep them running. Springtime is okay because you have a snowpack. The problem is late summer uh, could affect uh, salmon runs, agriculture, power generation, water supplies, so uh, as well as uh, rising sea levels as well. So. Just uh, something to, to look for. Sustainability, I guess, is me. Uh, and I'll do a part to try and keep pollution uh, um, levels as down as much as we can. Hopefully there'll be some more advances in carbon capture and, and stuff like that. And maybe it won't be as bad as, uh, as people are predicting. Yeah, so uh, some of the mountains, uh, the one on our left about 10 o'clock is Wilcox. Uh, Wilcox is American from the United States, Washington State. Uh, as an explorer, he came up here. Back in those days, the economy would have been uh, fur trading and gold mining. And the method of travel was horseback and canoes. So uh, Wilcox discovered Wilcox Pass, which was short for these guys to get their uh, product to market. The uh, people that first discovered the ice fields were from London, England. Steve Field, Coley, and Willie. Three very rich guys that made their money in the stock exchange. They, they were looking to do some ex, uh, exploring. Most of the mountains had already been discovered in Europe, so they came out here and uh, they were looking for mountains that were higher than the Everest ones. Booker and Brown. But that wasn't the case, but they stumbled across the ice fields, so they were uh, credited with its discovery. Even though the uh, First Nations people, the Stony Dakotas, were already here, but they knew about it, but they had no way of recording it into history books. So a lot of you guys were accredited with the uh, discovery. Yeah, so it's a, uh, a view of the uh, Fort Field Trail and some Wata Lake area, uh, if you want to stretch your legs a little bit. And they have some markers about, about every 10 years or so uh, with the glaciers retreat over the years. Yeah, so we're back at our old friend, the Big Hill. Um, we're going to go up it. We're going to give our motor a good workout. It's a 30-ton bus, 32% grade, and it's also a higher altitude here. So the air's about 20% uh, thinner than sea level. So the motors don't work as well as they do at the same as people at uh, the lower places.
just going to pin this straight to the floor, and that uh, this one has a Mercedes engine in it. Uh, it has about 1,100 foot-pounds of uh, engine torque, and six-wheel drive, and um, our special tire stuff a lot, so we're able to climb up these hills. about it being an ancient seabed. Uh, we, we, we know that because of the fossil evidence we find of uh, marine life that would exist in a warm ocean millions of years ago. Uh, so we look, look at the rock face in front of us and we can see the layers of sedimentation. The uh, black rings are uh, dosamite. Uh, there's limestone and shell mixed in it as well. how fast this thing can go. Okay, make sure you don't tell anybody, anybody about it because I might lose my position here, but uh, I like you guys so much that uh, we're going to do this. Okay, that's top speed. <laughs> Which is probably a good thing because uh, the buses have a tendency to start bouncing uh, if they go too fast, so uh, it's very hard on the passengers, particularly in the back of the bus. You don't want to see them throwing around like that. Yes, yeah, so we're almost back at the transfer base. Once you get there, we're going to uh, uh, get back on the highway coach. We'll head out to the uh, Skywalker. It's about a 10-minute drive uh, from here. Okay. 